Welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we are talking about how X-Men Days of Future Past probably saved the entire X-Men franchise. We're talking about the Simpsons Family Guy crossover. We also have a Zelda Hyrule Warriors review for you. And lots of quick hits. I mean, tons of quick hits. I don't even want to go through all the quick hits. So, stay tuned. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brittany. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> And Brennan seemed a little bit miffed by that one. Hmm. Hey, hey. Maybe he didn't expect him. Do you expect it when you find a giant, well, I don't know, seven, eight foot furry man with a chainsaw? I do. Right next to you? I do expect it. In fact, it actually <laughs> surprises me more when he's not there, so. Mm. You live a terrifying life. I do. You know, I like to live on the dangerous side. They call me Brian Danger. Okay, they don't really call me that. Sorry. I just made that up. If you want to call me that, you can. Hit me up. Call me Brian Danger in the comments down below. Okay, nobody cricket. wants to call me that. <laughs> I need a cricket nobody, sound. <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants to call me Brian Danger. But yeah, so this is Monday night. So we're actually on the right night tonight. And just so everybody knows, we're doing our sports show on Wednesday because Brendan has a previous engagement. And it's not Previous words engagement. Face. It's not words from my face. That's not the previous engagement. <laughs> it's not. But yeah, so, um, but yeah, let's jump right into it. Let's start off this week the same way we start off every week, and that is with the horrible movie of the week. And we're kind of <laughs> teaching it up the last couple of weeks. And, and more, it's, it's less of a review, more of a eight reasons or however many reasons I decide to make up that week uh, not to watch said movie. So we'll start it off. I'll let you know. This is. Age of Tomorrow is the name of the movie. You can check it out on Netflix if you want to. But if you do want to, after I tell you the eight reasons, uh, maybe you're glutton for punishment. Maybe. maybe what... Some people like that. Some people do like those cheesy bad movies. I'm not one of those people who really likes the bad movies. I can enjoy one every now them. and then. Well, yeah. Yeah, I do. And it hurts. Every single time. It hurts. Deep in my soul. I feel like a piece of my soul leaves every time I watch one of these horrible movies. Because I love movies. I'm pinned down! Yeah, just like that. I feel pinned down. <laughs> but yeah, so I watched Age of Tomorrow. Now, there is actually one actress in this that's actually pretty famous. Her name is Kelly Who. Uh, she was actually in X-Men 2. Kelly um, Who? Kelly Who. Kelly Who? Yeah, Kelly what? <laughs> Kelly How? Kelly We're sorry. What? <laughs> we're sorry. Kelly Who, yeah. So, Are we and, sorry? I don't know. Are we jerks? If you're watching this and you happen to be Kelly Who, um, cool. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what sorry your movie sucked. I was about to say some movies that you were good in, like X-Men 2. Um, you were in the show Arrow that I just finished watching season one of on Netflix. So you were pretty good in that too. So yeah, but you were horrible in this movie. And I'm pretty sure you were supposed to be. So eight reasons why you... You should not watch of tomorrow. First reason, um, obvious name ripoff of Edge of Tomorrow, the Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt movie that just came out not too long ago where aliens invade the Earth. And oh, I wonder what happens in this one. Aliens invade the Earth. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's the first reason. Reason number two is um, the CGI is just absolutely insanely horrible. Now, in the beginning, they decide to show this building burning, and it's obvious that it's not really burning. They just put some fake flames on the front because nothing is happening to this building or any of the buildings next to it. Oh, man, that, that's one that you, you really shouldn't mess up because you can, roll you a can green do screen a down. real building on fire fairly. Yeah. I, mean, I guess it's expensive, but come on. It's just roll a green portable. screen down the front of this scr of the building and, <laughs> and put in, like, something happening. It's just, it's just so horrible. You can tell nothing's really burning. And, it's, and like you said, it's not hard to make a burning building. Not people all. have been doing burning buildings in movies since what the tens? Never, forever. 
<laughs> it's on the Egyptian walls, burning buildings. Yes. Oh yes. Uh, number three um, is uh, they said, okay, so they bring back a retired army guy who, of course, has to have a chip on his shoulder and refuses the assignment, and then two seconds later accepts the assignment. Like, I mean, couldn't get any more cliche than that. But it also they did it so horribly that it's just it's sad to see. Um, number four, am I on four? Yeah, I'm on four. Their best plan to save the world involves sending a bunch of army, or I guess they're marines, sending a bunch of marines to an asteroid to blow it up. Not totally Armageddon style. Okay. Like, total rip off Armageddon. They're like, we need you to drill holes down and blow. Up. Yeah, it's the like, same right? thing of like, oh, we have to blow it up from the inside because the outside won't do enough, right? But instead of sending like actual like drillers, they send a bunch of Marines who have no flight experience, no space experience at all. Yeah, pretty bad, pretty bad. Um, number five, there is no loss of gravity when they get to space. Even when they're walking around on this asteroid, it seems like they're just. Like, in the spaceship, they're walking around normal, and on the asteroid, they're walking around normal. There's, yeah. Super dense asteroid, in which case they probably wouldn't be able to blow it up. Yeah, well, they, they say that it's the quarter a quarter of the size of the moon, and you do lose some gravity on the moon, but... So you're probably going to lose a lot more on this asteroid. <laughs> yes, so... Unless, no unless it's really dense, but then, it, like I said, if it's that dense, you're going to have a tough time blowing it up. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, what am I on? Six... Yeah, I'm on six. Uh, they don't even completely paint over the, you know, the caps of the guns. You know, fake guns are now required if they look any way real to have an orange cap on it. So it's obviously that they went to a, a, a toy store, bought a bunch of these fake guns, and didn't even completely paint over said caps. So that's pretty bad. <laughs> that uh, that just screams low budget right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It couldn't even afford spray paint. <laughs> but uh, or, or to cut off the, the the cap, you can do that too, guys. Yeah, you can do either one. But uh, number seven is it is made by Asylum Films. So I found that out after starting to watch it because I was researching, like, I was like, who made this film? Oh, Asylum Films made it. So there's two film companies that if they make one of these movies, uh, you know it's probably going to show up on Horrible Movie of the Week, uh, and that's Asylum and Phase 4. So just, just get ready for those to be bad movies. Those two studios need to make a movie together one of these days? Be the see. most ultimately bad movie of the week. See, it will either year. do that, or their combined forces will be just enough to make a mediocre movie. Well, hey, mediocre it, it could go either way. Week. It could be the worst movie ever, or mediocre. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. And so, and now this was really, really big to the plot. This is kind of what tied everything together. Um, somehow, the, one of the Marines gets transported, like teleported, to the alien invaders planet. And he has a regular walkie-talkie that he brought with him that has interplanetary reach. That's an amazing walkie-talkie right there. It's the best walkie-talkie of all time. I mean, he's like literally like, this is how you beat the aliens, guys. I'm going to die now. And, uh, yeah. And they hear it. So, Are you sure they're not? Is that a satellite one or something? Well, even a satellite one wouldn't work. Who had, what planet. satellite would they be goat? <laughs> yeah, it's a whole, <laughs> whole different planet somewhere else in the universe. So, yeah. So that's uh, the eight reasons why you should not watch. I, I forgot. Age of Tomorrow. I, I tried to block the name out of my mind. That's how bad it was. It was just that bad. And I did sit through the whole movie. It was horrible. I mean, absolutely horrible. I really could have written like 50 million reasons why you shouldn't watch this movie. But I, I held myself back. I only went with eight. So this movie is going to get one Chewbacca chainsaw out of five. Wow, one. Uh, we've been doing a lot of those. those really I know. The movies ones. I've been watching have been worse and worse, man. Worse and which, worse. It which, was by better. The way, let me give him this chainsaw. <laughs> If you'd like to recommend to Brian some bad movies, hit us up. Put a to be comment honest down with below. you, the ones people recommend to me are usually better than the ones I pick for myself, so please recommend something. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. What's My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus Facebook. And you know we got a website out there, so What's My Face.com. I don't say that enough because we do have one. It's kind of, kind of a thing. Yeah. It is a thing. It is a thing. Let's, let's, let's purge... Age of Tomorrow from our memories and move on to something that's a little better. 
and that is, I just wanted to talk about this because there, there's a lot of stuff coming out, and that is how X-Men Days of Future Past probably saved every other X-Men movie or Marvel movie that's going to be made by Fox from here on out. Because the time travel thing not only worked with it, it was, it was actually part of a storyline, but it let them erase a lot of what bad happened in X-Men 3. Now, if you don't remember X-Men 3, uh, lucky you. Lucky you. But they killed off Cyclops. They killed off Jean. They killed off Professor Xavier. Mostly. They took away yeah. Magneto's powers. They took away Mystique's powers. They pretty much took away everybody's powers, pretty much. And, yeah, it was pretty horrendous. The only thing good that came out of that movie was when the Juggernaut was, like, stuck in the ground, and he was like, Don't you know who I am? I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. He did do that. No, he, he didn't even talk, though, I don't think. They should have had him talking the whole time. Well, it was like a good actor, too, that was playing Juggernaut, so I didn't understand why they didn't Yeah, really there you know. go. Like, they, they took away all his personality. Now, granted, Juggernaut, you don't usually think personality with Juggernaut. You think he's the anti-personality guy, but still, like they're just like, he's there. Yeah. They also made him a mutant. He's not supposed to be a mutant. He That's true. He finds, like, a gem or something that gives him all his powers. Yeah, he's and actually, he hates mutants. Small guy. Yeah. Well, he that's hates why he because hates, uh, uh, yeah, because Xavier. Xavier was a mutant, and that was the other thing. They, Xavier never ha- doesn't indicate any knowledge of the guy. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, oh, you're he's not just my stepbrother. step-brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never we met him before in my life. Uh, you know, we don't need to worry about that. All right, so again, X Men Three ruined the whole franchise, and so when they brought First Class up, they were like, "Hey, how do we get around all the horrible stuff that happened in X Men Three? Oh, let's just start it in the '60s." So. They did really well. Now, there's really a planned trilogy for this. X-Men First Class was the first one. Uh, Days of Future Past was the second. And X-Men Apocalypse is going to be the third and final bit of this trilogy. I think mostly because Jennifer Lawrence, Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, and the guy who plays Beast, those guys only signed on for four movies. I mean, for three movies. So they're kind of thinking that it's going to go a little bit of a different direction. But recently they've been talking about they're, they're going to start casting for a young Cyclops, a young Jean Grey, and a young Storm. So pretty cool. You know, too bad Halle Berry is not going to be able to play that role, but... Yeah, and they kind of gypped her in Days of Future Past. That was my only gripe. They kind of gypped her in a lot of those movies. Honestly, for uh, the caliber of an actress that Halle Berry is, <laughs> and for the role she played, because Storm is not a small role in X-Men traditionally. She's one of the leaders. She had very... Yeah. She usually had a pretty minor part for for all that mm-hmm. in all the movies, really. Even in one and two, like she she was there, she does stuff, but she wasn't one of the 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 main focal characters. She doesn't have a whole lot of lines. She does some important stuff. Yeah, okay. but um, I was kind of surprised at just how uh, it, at her not having an even larger role. In that. And even Especially in the cause, first because you got Halle Berry playing it too, yeah. so. Well, even in the first two movies, they didn't quite give Cyclops his due as the leader of the X-Men, as the strategist, as, you know, okay, they go, Professor X sends him on the mission, and then Cyclops kind of makes the battle plan up. They didn't quite give him the respect, because they were kind of trying to focus on Wolverine, it seemed like, um, mm. with those movies, which I don't blame them too much. Wolverine is one of my favorite characters. Cyclops did get a, a little bit more attention, but you're right, you're right. He, he They showed him as not... Not even really as mature and uh, as strong a leader as he usually shows himself to be. They, they played up a little bit more his his rivalry over Gene with uh, with Wolverine and things like that. But yeah, they they kind of see him as like the opposite of the love interest in the movie instead of the leader of this group of mutants. I mean, because like I said, Professor X finds the mission, sends him out, and Cyclops kind of you know develops the battle strategy for when they get out there. So. You know, I, I'm hoping that in this X-Men Apocalypse, they're going to kind of give them back that role, you know, the traditional roles that they're set in. And, you know, it's nice because hopefully we won't have to go through the stupid Dark Phoenix saga like they messed up in X-Men 3. But in X-Men uh, Apocalypse, they're saying that there are also going to be some new additions to the X-Men team. Now, these are rumored, um, but it looks like Psylocke is going to make an appearance because Brian Singer and uh, the writer, I can't remember his name right now, um, both said that Psylocke was one of their favorite characters, and I think she's one of the most favored like fan characters that doesn't really pop up as much. She mm-hmm. wasn't in the cartoon, and that's kind of surprising. But um, yeah, everyone yes. was in, and she wasn't in any of the cartoons or in the the main cartoons. 
She so wasn't a like a main. She was in. I believe she made some appearances in the cartoon, the '90s cartoon, but she wasn't a main X Men. Which yeah, uh, yeah, because everyone really seems liked. to like show up at some point in that, yeah. but not not necessarily for very long. Wasn't one of the main characters. But like a telekinetic uh, ninja who can like throw like like has like gambit powers too. It's it's pretty cool. But uh, some of the new additions, so Psylocke. Um, I, I I guarantee we're gonna see an archangel archangel uh, appearance. Return. Well, he was in X Men Three, but again, we're pretending like X Men Three didn't happen, and they they can kind of do that because they did the time traveling, which changes the timeline. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But he's already in the universe. We know that Archangel around somewhere. Yeah, so. yeah. But and he plays a really big part as being the leader of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which Apocalypse kind of takes these mutants, twists them a little bit, and sends them out there. Um, looks like we we might see Cable. They were rumoring that because he also has a big part. In, in the Apocalypse Saga, he fights Apocalypse in the future and then comes back to help him fight him in the past. So hopefully we'll see him pop up there. And it looks like Gambit is going to be making a re- uh, return. That's uh, another fan favorite that, I mean, mm-hmm. one of my favorites too, that ha- I, hasn't shown up. Other yeah. than he was in the Wolverine movie for a little bit. Yeah, not enough though. Yeah. And, and I don't even know how much you really count the Wolverine movie at this point. I, I try not to count it too much either because that was pretty bad too. There was two back-to-back really bad movies. Origins and X-Men 3 were just like, ah, what are you doing? Um, but, you know, and in the comics, Mystique is his father, or his father, his mother. So that might be interesting the way they try to bring him in because they already showed Pietro, who is uh, Magneto's son. I don't think they're going to be able to do Scarlet Witch because of her involvement in the uh, Avengers. So that's. I thought be... they were going to, because they 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 were doing Quicksilver in both. So. Yeah, they might. Uh, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, um, we'll see. And, and I, I heard Tatum. that there were plans to have both of them anyway. Oh. So. Well, Channing Tatum is almost locked up to be that role, so that looks like good signs that we'll see a Gambit, and then kind of I'd, I'd say our favorite character from all the X Men movies, Nightcrawler. He's got now there we go, there we go. That's what I've been saying for a while. They needed to bring back Nightcrawler. And they Ever showed his father, the... Hazel, and they showed Mystique, who's his mother too, and she was part of the you know the evil Brotherhood for a while. So I honestly thought that after the events of Days of Future Past, they wouldn't be able to bring Nightcrawler in because I thought that maybe because of things that happened, maybe they erased him coming in. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that whatever they're doing, whatever, I don't even care if it's the biggest plot hole in history. Bring bring Nightcrawler in, I'll be happy. Bring bring him back. Are they getting the same actor for Nightcrawler as they did for X-Men 2? Uh, I am not sure about that. I have not heard about that one. Um, Because he was just perfect, spot on. Oh, yeah, he played it well. He played it very well. Um, Everything he played well. So I'm hoping so. And, and then, you know, I mean, this kind of opens the door for maybe a spinoff movie of Mystique's kids because she's known to mother, you know, be the mother of how many different mutants? Uh, I mean, I can think of Gambit and Nightcrawler, Rogue, I Rogue. think, at some point. Yeah. Uh, they move her in as her, her mother. So, Honestly, her kids are some of the most interesting of the of the bunch, too. So, mm-hmm. you know, Nightcrawler so. and Rogue alone and, and Gambit. Gambit's powers don't seem as related, but it's whatever. They're cool. Yeah, that's still pretty cool, darn cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll take wait, it. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. I didn't know. Gambit's one of her children? Yep. So in so the whole like thing with Gambit trying to get with Rogue all the time, that's... Well, that's... that's Realization! The... Now, they, they changed that in the cartoons, so don't worry about because that. Because they didn't the want to deal with incest? Yeah. But in the <laughs> comics, I believe Gambit is... Uh, Rogue is, is, I mean, sorry, not Rogue. Uh, Mystique is Gambit's mother. So, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. Comments are down below. But I believe in the comics that's how it all kind of plays out at one point. Because, you know, in comics they switch everything and then they switch it all again and then they switch it all again. So, at one point, she was his mother. Um, whether or not that holds true forever, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so that, that looks pretty cool. And then, I mean, we have another X-Men project. So, May of 2016 is when we're going to see X-Men Apocalypse. Then, apparently, July 13th of 2018, they have another X-Men film going to be slated for that time. So, who knows what's going to happen there. But we do know the Deadpool movie is coming. So, if they want to introduce Deadpool in, uh, with uh, if Cable into the Deadpool series, that might be cool. And then open the door for him to go over to X-Men Apocalypse. Because 
if you didn't know, there is a whole comic series. I believe there's about 50 volumes of it, of a Cable and Deadpool comics. It's called Cable and Deadpool. Hmm. So, so those two, those two run around together. Uh, something happens to them, and like in the first comic, and they get teleported somewhere, and their DNA gets crossed. So. Whenever one of them teleports after that, the other one shows up at the same place or something like that. So they go on to be their, their kind of, and both of those are cool characters because they're, they're, they're not bad guys necessarily, but they're not necessarily good guys. Hmm. Cable is a little more of a good guy, I'd say, than Deadpool, but you know, neither one of them. They're kind of like the anti-heroes, so you can kind of throw them in there and have a good time with them. But yeah, so look at all the, the beautiful possibilities that it has become just from having one movie where you travel back in time and erase all the other ones. So, you know, and, and if you noticed, at the end of Days of Future Past, they did still keep some of the same elements. Stryker still got Wolverine, you know, to give him Andamantium and all that stuff. And, and they still do, they're like, okay, this is what we're going to keep. So remember this from those two. But forget everything about Jean Grey and killing Cyclops and turning into Dark Phoenix. That's why they showed her, you know, in the new, the new uh, school. So, yep. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, Let us I know approved. what you think. Yeah, I approve too. Let us know what you think. Uh, is there any other cool things that might spin off of this? Um, should they just erase X Men Three or? Yeah, if you say no, I don't know. I, I lead people into these comics comments what I want them to tell me, but tell me whatever you want. To let me know what your thoughts. Any other characters that you think should really show up in the next couple movies or that deserve their own standalone movies? Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter, Where's My Face at gmail.com, Where's My Face dot com, uh, Facebook and Google Plus. Always, always good ways to get a hold of us. And let's talk about a little show event that we talked about a couple, uh, was that a couple months ago, right? Uh, about the when it was going to happen. We heard that this was going to happen, and now it seems like it finally has happened, and that was the Simpsons and Family Guy crossover. Yay! Uh, yeah, and it was actually happened. a lot of fun. I watched it yesterday, and my synopsis was it was awesome. Uh, now, really, it was, it was pretty much a Family Guy tribute to the Simpsons. It was written by the Family Guy people, uh, I believe the Simpsons uh, animators had uh, something to do with it because it was it was set in Springfield, but they did a lot of cool jokes. Like right when they set a show up in Springfield, they're like, "Hey, where are we? Oh, we're in a town called Springfield. What state are we in?" And Brian goes, "I don't think we're allowed to say." You know, <laughs> like they they have all these cool little jokes, but it was it was really just a tribute to the Simpsons and you know how great they've been for so long not not right now but for for a long time they were really one of the best shows on there and it was really cool it was kind of family guy using Simpsons jokes but then putting their little twist on the end like uh, yeah. there was one time where Peter and Homer go oh we're, we're be the best team ever we're better than blah you know because that's a family guy joke we're better than and then they cut to something else that makes it funny and they kind of led Homer into doing a couple of those cut scenes and stuff. And so pretty much the show was uh, the And they, they haven't even done as many of those cut scenes in the last few seasons, it seems like, either. So it's kind of like them going back to their roots. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean... And they still do them, but I, what I'm saying, they, they I remember there was, like, seemed like there was a turning point where they started not doing the clips mm. and just continued. Oh, yeah. So. But, yeah, so it, it just... You know, it was really Simpsons humors of years past, so the good part of the Simpsons humor with the Family Guy twist. And I know I already said that. But pretty much the episode was Peter gets chased out of uh, Quahog because he does something stupid, which, you know, Peter does. And their car gets stolen in Springfield. So Homer decides to help him out and takes him in for a little while. Whether And it's Peter and Homer going on a search for the Griffin's car. So it, it's just, it, it was really fun. Uh, the best part had to be the fight between Peter and Homer at the end. So if you like the chicken fights, you will love this fight. Because that's all it was. It was just a long, long chicken fight with Homer and Peter. So it was it was really cool. And, and Now, did they reference at all the fact that it's fairly clear that Family Guy is, in various degrees... A like a twisted, uh, exaggerated version of The Simpsons, or that's how it started out. I mean, it's the same kind of family set up, mm -hmm. other than the kids are a little bit older. Well, they kind of pair um, the kids off, like uh, Stewie and Bart, and Meg and uh, Lisa. So they Stewie kind of do. Stewie and Bart, not yeah. Stewie and Maggie. 
What, what happens to Maggie? Part. Maggie and Chris kind of more get more paired off because intellectually. Uh, all right. <laughs> it works. Trust me, it works because Stewie's just kind of idolizing Bart throughout the episode, trying to do what he does. At one part, point Bart says, "Eat my shorts," and Stewie goes, "Oh, I like that. I like that. Is that like what the deuce?" And Brian goes, "No, no, no. That's probably way, way more popular." <laughs> you know. And then, <laughs> so you know they do cool things like that, and of course they bring in the 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 humor of Family Guy because uh, Bart's showing Stewie how to do prank calls and so they of course prank call Moe's and Bart does his traditional thing which was funny and then he's like Stewie's like oh I want to try I want to try and he picks up the phone calls Moe's hey your sister's getting raped and then hangs up the phone so <laughs> it's kind <laughs> the of the over the top humor of yeah, just like too yeah. direct exactly okay. they, they kind of like to symbolize you know the differences between family guy and simpsons so they do that a couple times and it's really good but it just shows me that you know the simpsons still kind of have a couple laughs left but not in their original hash, half hour show anymore so this just gives me really really high hopes for the futurama and simpsons crossover that's going to happen in november i believe so we should be ready for that one. Yeah, Future almost will have some good laughs. So those writers will have something in them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I don't know, but let us know what you thought. Uh, did you like the show? Did you think it wasn't that good? Uh, did they wait too long to do something like this? Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at words, words for my face on Twitter, words for my face at gmail.com, words for my face dot com, Facebook and Google Plus. Always good ways to get a hold of us. But let's move it on to one of my favorite parts of the show. And that is Quick Kids. There you go. You got it. <laughs> All right. And the first quick hit is going to be PlayStation shuts down PlayStation Home. Now, if you played that, you're like the, one of the two people in the world that played PlayStation Home. Uh, that was kind of where you had your own like Sims, and it never caught off, caught on because it was they're like PlayStation, like hey, everybody can get together with their PlayStation IDs. And no, uh, it was literally like a lesser version of Second Life which was another thing that was supposed to take off and no one cared very much after a few months yes so that, 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 that except for you couldn't fly like in Second Life so I don't know I, I played around in um, the PlayStation Home a little bit and walked around whatever for I don't know less than an hour total ever hmm you know, over so, years. Shows, so, shows how interesting it is. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. That and I never felt experiment. compelled to buy anything for it. Like, they were always selling stuff for it. And I was like, why would I? Why Why do I care? Failed experiment <laughs> that they just try, kind of dragged on for way too long. I mean, long. there must have been people that, that did it. I did see that there was people around and there was people that had some of that stuff. So, I guess it worked for a little while. Mm. Something, somewhere, but, but not enough. Not enough. Yeah, no. Well, let's move it on to the next quick kid. And that is Halo Reach is on Games with Gold. Uh, I believe it ends tomorrow, so download it while you can. I usually tell you guys earlier, but I uh, thought that one was worth worth checking out. So if you're a Halo fan, go ahead and download that for free if you have Xbox Live. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. That was a little bit of a preemptive slash there. This next <laughs> one better be good. And that is a four-episode story arc has been released on StarWars.com. For Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now, this is an unfinished one, so they're kind of just going through storyboards. It's really, it's not all there, but they had a cool, like, story arc that was going to go. Um, is this going to be canon? Because there's I that guess. big controversy. What's canon now? What's not? It's, but I thought... It's on StarWars.com, so... And Clone Wars was supposed to be the only, you know, real canon from outside yeah, of movies. Yeah, but so. the Clone Wars cartoon, not necessarily the odd lied storyboards... Well, I don't know. I, it's I, on StarWars.com, so I don't, I don't know. Disney's not confusing you know, us. Everything is canon now. <laughs> Everything. It's kind of trying to take over because you saw Anakin's Padawan leave kind of at the end there, and uh, they never really told you what happened to her, so kind of trying to wrap up her storyline. She so. dies. Maybe. Maybe <laughs> not. Um, and I believe, if you haven't seen it, Star Wars Rebels, I believe, is coming out. It might already be out. I haven't checked it out yet. I need to look for it, because it's probably going to be awesome. But let's move it on to the next quick kid. And out this week in comics is Thor number one. Now, this is the story of female Thor. This will tell, show who the female Thor is. I believe they keep her identity secret, but it'll show her picking up Mjolnir, and it'll kind of tell us why Thor lost 
uh, Mjolnir. What he did to make himself unworthy. So that's going to be pretty cool. And they also say he is wielding a god-killing axe himself. So maybe Thor's turn. The original Thor is turning bad. This is going to be the next trend of. Uh, I, I I know they've done it before, but. I mean, have they already done every superhero with a female version now? No. Like Superman has Supergirl. There's Bat, a Batgirl. Spider Woman. These... Yeah, Spider Woman. Um, Captain America's never been a girl. We well, sure. No, Probably not. Sure. I don't know. Robins been. They've been. There have been two girl Robins. Hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I mean, this is I mean? another one. There's an obscure one. I I don't know. There's probably a few that haven't, but maybe maybe I I don't want to doubt that there's been a female version of everyone at some point. So I mean, I know. you know, there's the infinite universe thing in DC. So <laughs> is there yeah. one that we think should have a girl version that doesn't have one yet? No, well, let us know. Right, or should have a more emphasized one? Yeah. 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 Um. Let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Call of Duty is actually expecting a very large drop-off. Not a very large drop-off, but a drop-off in sales. They say there is a little bit of COD fatigue out there for Advanced Warfighter. So where Ghost sold 20 million, they only expect Warfighter to sell about 17 million. Not a huge drop-off. still not bad. But some games would kill to sell 3 million copies. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that, that's... Yeah, 17 million is still spectacular. Yeah, and they're turning these games out, like, so often, I know a lot of people that have already gotten to the point that they, they say they wait just every two years to get the, you know, they skip one. Although maybe they should change that up because I think if you were doing every two years, that meant that you were doing a specific studio. Yeah. Because didn't they they were switching them out and now they do it from Treyarch three to... studio cycle. Oh wow! So yeah, it usually went from Treyarch to Infinity Ward, and then so yeah. Um, my opinion though. Because the Treyarch ones have better zombies, Infinity Ward, Ward ones have better first-person gameplay, like the story mode. So, hmm. but let's move it on to the next quick kid. And that is Kevin Smith recently announced that he finally has enough funding to make a Clerks three. Whereas I say to that, Clerks two wasn't that good. Stop killing your movies. <laughs> I mean, Clerks one wasn't. I mean, I people Clerks love one. Clerks one. I enjoyed it. Yeah, but it, it was an indie film. That's so, why I enjoyed it, because yeah, it was yeah. kind of raw, you know. It was funny, but it wasn't, like, polished. And yeah, but the too. second one was pretty raw, too, although they, they kind of did a few things that were just, like, you're just going over the top to be over the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I wasn't a big fan of that one. But let's move it on to the last quick hit of the night. And that is the box office. Number one, coming in number one, is The Equalizer with $35 million in domestic sales. Um, that's the new Denzel Washington movie, movie, which got panned by critics. But apparently, if you like to go see Denzel kick some butt, that's what you got. So, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Don't There's a lot of things that get panned by critics that sell well. Yeah. I think The Fast and Furious, I don't think anyone cared about that and critically. but It always makes well. a bazillion dollars, that's for sure. Um, yeah. But coming in number two was The Maze Runner with $17.5 million, bringing its two-week total up to $58 million. And then number three was The Box Trolls. That is the CGI movie that I have no idea anything about. But that was your quick hits of the night. And let's move it on to our final topic of the night. And this one, I'm actually going to get to sit back and relax and enjoy. Because Brendan has prepared for us a Hyrule Warriors game review. Now that, if you don't know, is pretty much... The Legend of Zelda taking on uh, the Dynasty Warriors type, type stuff. Is it made by the developers of Dynasty Warriors? Yeah, it's made by Koei, the developers of Dynasty Warriors. Um, all the different Dynasty Warriors variants and other games. And apparently it was their idea too. They they went to Nintendo and said, hey, we would like to make this Zelda crossover. And Nintendo said, alright, go for they it. They said, money? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and they worked with them to to make it to large to some degree. But uh, I've heard if you've seen any of the Nintendo directs about it and things like that, um, they gave the Dynasty Warriors team uh, a good bit of leeway. Um, the Dynasty Warriors guys were very enthusiastic about not straying too. F- Obviously, they had to stray from um, the Zelda setup, but they they wanted to 
to incorporate Zelda a good bit. That's why they wanted to make this game in the first place, because they were all fans of the franchise. They're guys. Well, I mean, that have... Zelda is just one of the biggest franchises of all yeah. video games of all time. Yeah, yeah, and for some of these guys, they talked about it was something like, you know, your favorite game as a child. Now you get to make it. And it was kind of, you know, a daunting task, you would say, to, to start making a Zelda game. But uh, but they took it on, and it, it I got to say, it was it's an amazing game. Okay. Um, all okay. the hype, and like I said that I was waiting for it and expecting uh, have, good things out of it. We have it dropped up to lots it. of different bombs about that game in the previous months. So. Yeah, and everyone I've heard from agrees, too. Um, it, it lived up to the hype. It, it really did. And it really met the expectation. What we are expecting, we're expecting Dynasty Warriors, several elements from the different Dynasty Warriors uh, franchises, because there's a bunch of different split-offs, right? Um, with not simply a Zelda skin, but with a little bit of like Zelda elements mixed in. And they delivered that. Like It feels, it doesn't feel just like a Dynasty Warriors game. It definitely feels like, strongly like a Zelda game done in a new style. Um, but staying true to this hack and slash uh, format of the Dynasty Warriors and the way uh, it progresses. And honestly, I think it turns out better than probably any other Dynasty Warriors games that I've played. And I've recently gotten into Dynasty Warriors like in the last two years, um, being a big fan, but this might be the best. Um, Because they incorporate, like I said, things from Several of the different Dynasty Warriors variants, they they do a little bit of strategy um, during the course of the battle, like Empires did, where they, there are bases to to take and that you capture and um, outposts to, to capture and things like that. So you have to strategize and help make sure your bases are defended in that way. Um, there's... Um, build up of weapons there's all kinds of little extras um there's something that they i haven't seen in most of the others which you actually don't start with all the combos you build up the combos there's with your leveling with your items and everything for all the characters which is a cool just extra thing to do um they incorporate zelda in so well with how the this level progresses because it's not like dynasty warriors where you just go out you fight you're told okay go kill that guy go kill that guy and they have um, no story in the dynasty warriors i yeah, don't care if they try there to is more the there is more story here it's not it's super thick but it is a decent story and it is a de- it's a pretty good zelda story progression that mixes all the different zelda games or at least several of them um very well too because they're all aware because they're supposed to be a long zelda timeline right and they're all aware of each other. And they end up going to, to the different times, for instance. And they're aware, like, oh, wow, I'm in the time of the legendary hero of time. And mm-hmm. they know about that. And it's, it's a big deal. And they, they incorporate that very well. So um, would this be one of the reasons that uh, Nintendo finally decided to release, like, an actual, like, timeline for Zelda? Maybe. I mean, they, they, they released it a little while ago. But it definitely helped. It definitely helped <laughs> to, to yeah. incorporate it here. Um, and, and the the Dynasty Warriors teams they're not uh, strangers to to doing that. Like Warriors Orochi had a big time travel element, um, and they went through different periods of China and different areas and things like that. And so they had to mix things in that one too. But it seems to be more relevant in this one for some reason. Yeah. Even though that was a historical, they go through historical periods. This is going through Zelda's stuff, whatever timelines. Zelda historical it periods. Well. Yes, yes. In fact, I think they call it that at some point. You go unlock historical events huh. and things like that. <laughs> Fictional historical events. That yeah. Um, it, but yeah, it's just a very rich, uh, rich game. Um, one of the things that I was curious about in the Dynasty Warriors games, you usually have like a hundred um, different characters. You don't have that in this game. You think that might be a drawback, but. There's only so many characters for them to choose from. They still have a good number, I think 13, 14, 15, something like that. Um, but to also help compensate for that, and I almost like it better, each character has different weapon styles that you can get for them and different weapon upgrades for each weapon style. Uh, so it's like playing a different character because the, st- the way you use them is very different. 
but you're only leveling up one character for regular stats and you can still play with some of your favorite characters even when you're playing a different style. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things I was surprised by was, was Link. He gets the Fire Rod. And for some reason, I missed the the version where they showed the Fire Rod because I thought he was just going to run around with a Fire Rod and use it like a sword and maybe he'll just throw fire while he was using it as a sword. But no, it's a completely different style and it is amazing. That mm-hmm. thing, we, you end combos and it shoots out giants dragons like <laughs> or dragons? turns into turns into a multi uh spouted flamethrower that just destroys everyone like it's it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome uh they do a lot of that um now and you, they incorporate other games you said there's like uh there's a bunch of characters do they include bad guys like ganondorf yes yes they um i'm actually i i we've only had this weekend uh, but I think I'm right around the time that we're probably going to get some of the bad guys, started encountering some of the main guy, bad guys like Ganondorf, um, Gear, Heem, whatever from the um, Skyward Sword series has shown up, but I fought him uh, a few times, and I know you eventually get him. And some of the other guys, and some of the guys that were sort of good, sort of bad, um, like the, the Goron Chieftain, he's he's shown up, you're going to get him. Yeah, he's um, like bad, and then he's good in most of those games. And they incorporate the same thing of he kind of goes crazy because something happens, and, and they they make references to... They, they did a very good job making references to events in the Zelda series while not completely going in. Like, they'll twist it a little bit. Like, there are the main bad guys now involved in what those conflicts were. And you honestly don't even have to have played uh, any of the... Like, knowing the references is cool, but um, I had never played Skyward Sword. I played through the Skyward Sword stuff. I didn't uh-huh. need to know it. Whatever. Yeah. I got a little bit an indication of stuff from there. I got what I needed to know for this storyline, which was very well done. So that, that was another nice thing. I didn't feel like I was missing out having not played uh, some of the games that you go through. You still get some of their story. You still get enough um, to really progress this story. That was cool. Cool. So give it to us in a nutshell. What do you rate it out of five Chewbacca chainsaws? I'm going to have to give this one a five because, honestly, one, it seems like something that Chewbacca would be awesome in. I mean, come on, Dynasty <laughs> Warriors with Chewbacca chainsaws? We should have Star nice. Wars uh, Warriors. Star Wars Warriors. That'd be a cool one. That's Star an Warriors. idea. Warriors, because they have to have warriors in there. Dynasty Warriors, yeah. you know. I mean, they have so many different skins, and like, uh, and, and like I was saying, they've done so many different skins. They've done uh, <laughs> Greek stuff. I don't know why it's samurai. They did uh, Gundam, and this is even more. This is actually a further departure from the normal Dynasty Warriors styles than the Gundam one was, because mm-hmm. uh, they've really it's just a well done mix um, <laughs> of stuff. Like the progression is great, and and the incorporation of items. I could go on forever. Great game though. Check it out. Definitely go play it. Play U, it. See for yourself. It. Yeah, if you got a Wii U, go get it. So, all right, awesome. So, go hey. get a Wii U to get this. Okay, go do that. Ah, so and then play Wii online somewhere. It, there yeah, you kind go. Of. I think you can only do that in adventure mode. But who cares? We'll figure it out. Hit us up if you have it. Hit us up. We'll. we'll Brendan needs people to play with, so we'll link you guys. And up. Because I'm going to have to keep talking about it. Two player in this game. Best way to do it. So if you have a friend. Pull them over to your house. Start playing it. Get a pro controller right now before you get the game. Get a pro controller. Play it and play on the game pad. Get Just... them together. Yes. Everyone. Okay. It's fun for the whole family. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to be about it for the evening. Um, so, wait. I, I'm sorry. I'm going to retract the previous statement. Let us know what you think about Hyrule Wars. If you have it, if you played it, if you want to play with Brendan, hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, Words My Face.com, Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways to get a hold of us. But that's going to about do it for us for the evening. So, hope you enjoyed it. And, and as always, my name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint.